paper, a jar of water, canvas, and some paper towels. Here are the supplies for the butterfly painting where we'll be talking about detail and layering. You will need folk art acrylic paints in navy blue, rose pink, baby pink, Jamaican sea, buttercup, and then treasure gold in rose gold. We'll also need a pencil, scissors, and some scrap paper. Here are the supplies you'll need for this doodle painting. You will need folk art acrylic paints in podge pink, baby pink, titanium white, green sea, and rose pink. You'll also need a navy blue paint pen. Here are the supplies you'll need for this abstract brushstroke painting. Folk art acrylic paints in green sea, Jamaican sea, navy blue, podge pink, baby pink, and rose pink. You'll also need treasure gold and rose gold. Here are the supplies you'll need for this painting where we'll be talking about ombre and masking off using tape. Folk art acrylic paints in titanium white, podge pink, green sea, Jamaican sea, and tangerine. You'll also need some stencil tape or painter's tape. For this painting, I'm gonna be demonstrating a really simple technique using some painter's tape. We're gonna mask off some of the area and then we'll be doing a really simple ombre technique on top. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is putting some paint on our palette. So the first color is going to be Folk Art Acrylic in Green C. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that onto our palette. And this is gonna be our base coat color. So I'm gonna grab a larger brush. So here in front of me, I have a 3 4 inch flat brush, but really any brush is okay for this. As long as you can um, get the entire canvas base coated, it can be a little bit larger, a little bit smaller, it's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pick up some of my paint and I'm just gonna start by base coating the entire canvas. And this color is going to be what is beneath our tape. So if you look at our final painting there, you can see all of the edges and all of the borders and sort of that grid pattern is made up of this color. And that's because that is where we're going to be putting our tape once it dries. It's a really, really easy way to get some really funky and modern patterns in your painting. So whenever you're base coating, you don't have to use a lot of paint. I think a lot of people um, sort of glob paint onto their canvas and they just wanna get a ton of paint on there and smear it around so it's really full coverage. But with folk art paints, um, folk art acrylic paints, you don't need to do that. You can just use a little bit of paint, um, just enough to cover the canvas because as you can see, it's just gonna be one coat and we're gonna be done. You don't have to worry about putting a second coat on because folk arts have really, really great coverage. So you just want to have enough paint on your brush. You can see I, I hardly have any paint on my brush, just enough to cover the area that you're painting. And that's great too, because then you don't have to wait for it to dry as long. If you put way too much paint onto your canvas while you're painting, you just have to wait for that to dry and that can take much longer. But if you put, like I said, just enough to cover the canvas, it'll dry super quick and you can move right on to your next step. And I really love this color. It's like sort of a, a muted minty color. I think it's so pretty. And we're going to add those pops of color on top. It's going to be great. But if you don't have this exact color at home, you know, you can totally customize this painting to fit your decor. Whatever your space is like, you can change up the colors of this painting easily to match whatever, wherever it is that you're planning on hanging this. If you feel like your brush is starting to drag a little bit, you can just dip your paintbrush into some fresh water. Just dip it ever so slightly. You don't want a ton of water on it because we don't want to dilute our paint. We just want to kind of keep the brush gliding across the canvas. You don't want to, you don't want it to, there to be any water on your canvas. That's just, like I said, going to dilute the paint and it's going to cause you to have to put more coats. Just sort of dip the brush so it stays nice and wet and keeps moving. And I always start with some fresh water whenever I'm painting. And then sometimes I like to change it out as I go too. You can paint the sides as well. Don't forget about the sides. Or you can finish those later. A lot of times I kind of save those till the end just for keeping things nice and tidy so I don't make a mess, but it's totally up to you. Okay, so you can see one coat is full coverage. Oops, I don't have to worry about adding a second coat. So now we're gonna let this paint dry and then we're gonna move on to our second step. So now my painting is nice and dry. I didn't have to wait long because acrylic paints dry super quick. And as you can see, I decided to save my, my edges for the end 
And the reason I did that is that because sometimes when I'm lifting it up and painting the edges and kind of doing it all in one, um, one sitting, I just make a mess. So I like to save them to the end after my painting's dry and it's just a little bit simpler that way. So now it's a fun part. We're gonna start taping. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my tape. So what I have here is some gray stencil tape and it's about mm, three quarters of an inch wide, but you can use painter's tape or you can use even washi tape is great for this technique. And you can kind of be playful too with the width of your tape. You can use a thinner tape or a thicker tape. It's totally up to you. You can be creative with it. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna start taping off a pattern. And as you can see here, I kind of mentioned earlier, where the green is on this final painting is where I had the tape. So you can be totally creative with your pattern. You can do sort of a grid technique like I did, or you can kind of mix it up and do sort of a spider web looking thing. Again, you can be totally creative. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna follow the same pattern that I did on my first painting. So I'm gonna grab some tape and I'm gonna do a diagonal grid. So I'm gonna start here. And I kind of just like to tap it down. I don't push it down um, until I'm done with my pattern in case I wanna move things around. So just kind of tap it down lightly so it sticks and I'm gonna continue making my grid. So like I said, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. You can totally measure it if you want to. You could mark off the sides with a ruler and a pencil and get an exact grid, but I'm not really worried about that today. I'm just sort of putting it down where I think it looks good. So go ahead and grab another piece of tape. And again, trying to make it fairly even, but not, not doing anything special, not using any specific measurements. And again, I'm not pressing down completely yet. I'm kind of waiting till the end to make sure that I like where all of my tape is before I, I really press it down firmly. You can see I haven't wrapped it around the edges yet, but I will later. Another piece of tape. And you can follow my pattern or you can make up your own pattern. Like I said, you can do any pattern that you want. You can be super creative with this part. And I'm gonna grab some smaller pieces that I'm gonna put, it's sort of almost like a stacked brick pattern, but diagonal. <clears throat> so I'm gonna put a few smaller pieces here and there. So I wanna make sure that they don't go over um, the two uh, perpendicular pieces that you've already put down. You don't want it to go like this and stick out over it because that's gonna cover up the paint and that's going to affect our, our final pattern. So you wanna make sure that it doesn't go over either of these um, two pieces of tape here. So I'm gonna put it there and see it doesn't go over those. It just goes right on top, which is perfect. So just kind of be mindful when you're pulling your um, tiny pieces of tape that they're not too long for this part. Another piece here. This one might be too long, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just trim it a little bit. And I'm gonna keep doing this again, trying to make it as even as I can, but it's definitely not perfect. I'm not using a ruler. I'm not doing any, you know, math or specific measurements. I'm just sort of eyeballing it. You can see I'm kind of like offsetting it, just like I said in the beginning, sort of like um, some stacked brick would be. So I've got the two here and then one in the middle and then I'm gonna do two and one in the middle and kind of follow that pattern out. Just an easy way to make a really geometric looking pattern without having, like I said, I keep saying it, without having to do lots of measurements. And you just wanna continue it anywhere where the pattern would be on your canvas, even if it's on the very edge. You wanna make sure it look like, looks like your pattern is continuing. It doesn't just stop in a certain place. You want it to look like it's an all over pattern or we're seeing just a tiny piece of it. Another little piece down here. And I think I'm gonna put a couple more here and there because that's where it would be in the pattern. I think there would be some more on those, those two areas. I'm gonna put a little piece here. And then I'm gonna put another little piece about there. Okay, so now's the time where you kind of wanna look at your canvas. You can even hold it up if you want to, hold it in front of you and make sure that you like the way it looks. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna firmly press down all of my, my tape. You don't want any pieces sticking up, especially all of the edges. The edges are really important because that's the part that's gonna be masking off the paint. So if any of the edges are lifted up at all, paint will seep under there, which is not the end of the world. You can always go back and touch it up with your green C, but we're gonna try to avoid that. So I'm gonna go around all the edges with my finger and make sure they're nice and stuck. Oops. 
I don't wanna have to do any touching up at the end. But like I said, if you do, it's not a big deal. Since we just have a solid color in the background, it'll be really easy to fix if it does end up bleeding, but it shouldn't. So here is the time where if you want to have your pattern sort of um, going over the edge, you can press it around the edges too. But you don't have to. You can see in my first one here, I just sort of stopped right at the edge. I just have green on the edges. So it's kind of up, up to your preference. I might have the same for this one too, but something to think about when you're painting yours at home. Just kind of pressing these down so they're not in my way. They're not getting stuck on me. Okay, so just one more time. I'm just gonna do one more time over looking at everything, making sure everything is nice and pressed down before we start on our top layer. Okay, so that looks good to me. So now is the another, another fun part. I keep saying we're getting to the fun part because I think all the parts are fun. Um, but the next step is doing the ombre or the gradient technique, um, the blending on top of the tape. So to do that, we're gonna be using four colors. So all the colors we have in our palette here that is not our green C are the colors we're gonna be using for this part. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start with my white. So I have titanium white here. I'm gonna put a little bit of that on my palette. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of my Jamaican C and put a little bit of that too. We're gonna go ahead and put all the all four colors on our palette right now. And then some podge pink. And give yourself some space, give yourself some room. Don't put them too close together. And then some tangerine. And I always just put a little bit to start. You don't need to have, you know, a giant lake of paint on your palette to start. You can always add more. But like I said earlier, acrylic paint dries really quickly. So the more uh, paint you put on your palette, if you don't end up using it, you're just gonna waste it because you can't put it back in the bottle. So I always like to start small and then add as I need to. So for this next step, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab a smaller brush. And what I have here is a number 12 flat brush. So a half inch flat or anything that looks similar to this is totally fine. But something to keep in mind is too, if you're doing a different pattern than me and you have larger or smaller areas, you might wanna use a different size brush. So this brush is great for the size areas of um, canvas that I have left open with my tape. But if you have larger areas, you might wanna stick with your 3 4 inch flat or smaller areas, you might want a smaller flat brush. So just keep that in mind. So we are gonna start our blending. So I'm gonna start with white. So I'm gonna load a little bit of my titanium white onto my brush. And I'm gonna start with this one right here, just because it's a nice big space. It's not cut off on any of the edges, just to kind of demonstrate how we're gonna be doing this ombre effect. So I'm gonna start on this side. And I'm just gonna start painting the white on, just sort of laying out my color, where my color is going to be. And I'm gonna go about halfway. So now I'm gonna wipe my brush with my paper towels. I'm not gonna clean it in water. Just gonna wipe off the excess paint. And I'm gonna pick up some of my Jamaican C, which is this really pretty blue color. And I'm gonna start doing the same thing on the other side, going towards the center. And I'm gonna go right into that white and I'm gonna keep going. And do you see how that blended so nicely? So whenever I have excess paint, I'm gonna go ahead and keep wiping it off on my paper towel and I'm going to keep blending those two paints together. I'm gonna to go back with my white. I just, again, I'm wiping off the excess paint. I'm not putting it in water yet. We don't need any water. And I'm gonna go back with the white on the other side and blend it into the middle. And you can see how super duper easy that is to blend it. You just want your paint to stay wet and just keep blending it right into each other. Do you see how super simple that was? It's really easy to do. So this is really um, the technique we're gonna be using for the rest of the painting. I'm also gonna show you how to do a three color ombre with the um, podge pink, tangerine, and then white in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna rinse my brush now. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure all the water is out. Whenever I rinse my brush, I wanna make sure I don't have any extra water in the bristles. So I'm just pressing it onto my paper towels to make sure I'm getting any extra water blotted out. Okay, so now I'm gonna pick up some pot.